What's the word, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Will. We're back again. Another episode of Life After Prison. <laughs> What's up, people? You know who it is? It's Big Will. Let's get it started. Hey, if it's your first time here, hit that like and subscribe button. It's free. Don't cost you nothing. I mean, if you don't like my content, don't cost you nothing. Just hit the button. Helps me out. If you don't like my attitude, hey, just hit the button. It don't cost you nothing. Anyways, today I was doing some thinking back when I was locked up. The shit that happened, you know what I mean? And uh, I seen a kid who pulled up while I was working, and um, hey, well, what's up? How you doing? You know, nice kid. We didn't become friends, but we became acquaintances on some messed up shit. So, this is how it went, anyways. I'll tell you the backstory first. So, my daughter's mother and I, we, our relationship went south, we split up. Um, I met my wife now, Jennifer, and she went out and did her own shit. Um, at that time, like I said, I was, uh, I was selling drugs, back and forth, selling drugs, using drugs, and when I ended up getting locked up, she started using And she became an addict, right? She started using with my sister-in-law, who's now deceased, rest in peace, Ollie, um, who was overdosed. Um, but anyways, that's a whole nother story there. But anyways, um, so my ex starts using, but when I was in jail, she cheated on me, right? So when I got out, I left her. And I met my wife, and that's where I've been since. Now, back in 2015, so it was around 2014, I, me and my wife had a fight, and I went out, I went on, I went out on a, on a banger, as they call it, right? So I went out and had a fun. Now at the time, like I said, um, my ex was using. So, but she hadn't. She had a new a new boyfriend that she met or whatever. She was living with him or whatever. She moved into his apartment. Blah blah blah. When me and my wife had this fight, I called her up and I was like, "Yo, listen, tell your man he's got to get out." Da 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 da. I'm coming through, tell him he's got to go, blah, blah, blah. Now, it's his apartment, <laughs> and she tells him, listen, you got to go. Like, Will's coming home, right? And I wasn't coming home to stay. I was just out hanging. I didn't go with her to have a relationship. I went back with her just to run for a few days, right? We went on a run. That's all we did. And um, But she told him, listen, you got to go. So we're there. In her apartment, I'm there with her. In his apartment, and I'm taking his shit and I'm pointing it in his TV and his jewelry. I'm pointing it in so I can get high, right? She's spending, well, she's with me. She's pointing it in, we're pointing it in to get high. <laughs> he's out, I don't know where he is, where he's staying and everything. But, anyways, one night while we're there, um, it's probably about 12, 30, 1 o'clock or something. We hear a horn beeping, 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 beeping. And she looks out the window and it's him. And his name's Mike. And it's him and he's sitting out there and he's with like uh, four or five guys in the car. And they're calling me on. Come outside, Will. Come outside. You're dead. All this bullshit. Me being who I am, I grab a bat and I go outside. 
When they go outside, they take off. They're in a car, they take off, right? So now they take off and the phone call starts. He's calling her phone and tell him he's dead. I'm the same, blah, 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 blah. All this bullshit. And I'm like, listen, I just went outside. You, you know, you took off. You're a punk. You're a punk. Blah, blah, blah. The, the 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 argument you know the bickering goes back and forth he keeps calling her phone saying this and that and i'm like finally i'm at the point where hey, i'll fuck this kid you know what i'm saying he's a telephone tough guy tell him tell him you know go screw off so anyways um next day comes i go uh running through with uh a brother of mine and uh we take the 32, we go running by, and we shoot up the place he's staying. Nobody gets hurt, we just send a message. Shit, blah, 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 shit goes south. Um, I don't see the kid, everything's quiet, right? So, you know, a few days goes by, and like I said, I come home, me and my girl, I come home. Me and my girl, I come back to my uh, wife's house and, you know, whatever. I guess he got back with her and whatever. And he was sorrow. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you know, you go, you, you know, you had him here and you kicked me out of my own apartment for him. Well, long story short, like I said, um, around 2015 comes, I get locked up. I bail out. 2016, I get locked up again. This time they hold me, they detain me. I ended up doing two and a half years. Now, when I'm in, I'm in for a, I'm in for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I get clean. I start working out. You know, and I get a job. And everything's good. Everything's good. You know, and doing my time, and the the there's no problems going on, and so. It's one night, and we're sitting there at uh, the card table, and uh, we're talking, and I hear somebody say, this kid Mike's coming through. Now, I, I'm i not going to put his name on blast. I don't, I'm not going to say his last name. I'm not going to put him on blast, um, <laughs> especially because, like I said, I'm uh, we're not friends, but I'm cool with the kid. Anyway, so... The, uh, we, we go to, now I'm a worker, I'm a worker, so we go to passing out laundry, right, everybody else is on lockdown, we passing out laundry, we're passing out uh, meals to the lockups, the people who are on lockup, we're passing out meals, we're passing out laundry and shit like that, now the new commits come in, it's about 6.30, the dude don't see me, but I spot him, I said no problem, he goes walking through, he gets, he goes walking through, he goes to his cell. I go walking to his cell after he locks in, and I say, knock on his window. He looks up at me, and I'm like, what's up? All that rah-rah tough guy shit you were talking at night. You come by with your boys, I come outside, you take off. You telling me on the phone I'm dead. You're talking all kind of shit about my wife. When these doors crack, I'm putting you in medical. <laughs> you can see the kids start stressing, right? Holy fuck. He's only, he's, the kid's a short kid, right? A little kid, he's a skinny kid. He starts stressing, right? I go to medical, I, I mean, I go to work, we're passing out laundry, and I'm telling the kid, you know, you're, you're done. When I catch, when you come out, when these doors crack, I'm, I'm busting your face, I'm coming in here. Matter of fact, I'm going to have the CO crack the cell, and I'm coming in here. I got your meal, because he's a new commit, right? So, when he came back from court, they delivered his mail to the unit. I got your meal. I'm going to have him crack the door and put your meal in. No, 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 he's saying. I'm saying to the CO, crack the door. Crack his door. He's in the window. No, 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 I don't want the meal. I don't want the meal. The CO's like, fuck. So he calls me down. Doopers, come here. 
Now I had work. I was a worker for these for these CEOs for I don't know, probably four or five months, and they knew me, right? Like I was the guy that had my own self for a while. I refused every time we had new commits. I would pack my shit and tell a CEO, "Listen, if you put someone in with me, I'm blasting them, I'm taking them out, and you know I'll go to medical. I don't want I don't want to sell you until the unit is full. Until this is the last bunk, I don't want to sell you." I like living by myself. If you put someone in here, especially if it's someone that I don't get along with, especially if it's someone that stinks or they talk to the, something, they got some psychological problems or someone who's hyper and jumping and loud and um, I'm blasting them, I'm taking them out, you're going to lose a worker, I'm going, or whatever. So I don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Well, anyways, so... The kid, the kids, and I'm telling the CEO calls me now. What's up? And I'm like, ah, that kid, I had some some shit in the street. You know what I'm saying? When my kids' mother, I was oh, he come by the house, whole bunch of shit. He told the guy what happened. It was a long story. So now the kid, you know, um, we're passing out laundry. After we pass out laundry, it's time for us to take a break. We go in, we lock in, so the COs can go for lunch. One goes, the other one comes. One goes. So now we're on, now we're, we're on lockdown. Everybody's on lockdown. There's no movement. The CEOs go for lunch. While we're there, you can hear like the ching, 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 ching. You know, it, it tells you that like someone's coming in, there's keys. You know, you can tell that there's uh, people there. Handcuffs and shit. So it draws your attention. You go to the door. Well, I'm looking out the door and the kid's cell pops. And he's like, I gotta leave. I gotta leave. And he's like, What do you mean you gotta leave? See, I was like, What do you mean you gotta leave? He's like, I gotta leave. I can't. I, I I can't stay in this unit. I'm not comfortable here. The one thing I can say for the kids, he never put me on blocks. He never told on me. He never told on me. But he did check in. He checked in the PC. He went and lived in a different facility. And the funny part about it was. After about a year, I had a bunch of little hitmen, you know what I'm saying? Little guys that uh, were following me and shit. I had a bunch of little hitmen, and um, the captain broke us up, and he, he made me leave the facility. He sent me to a different facility, and it was because, like, when I would go to Chow, there was, like, 30 guys. They wouldn't go, you know, 15 guys. They wouldn't go to Chow until I went. We'd be at chow, nobody would get up from the table until I was done eating. You know what I mean? That's the kind of respect and the, the, the following I had. So when they were seeing too much of this, you know what I'm saying? Like there was a problem, you know, a certain guy that would sit with me, he was going to handle it. Shit like that, you know what I'm saying? And I just had a lot of pulling and they didn't, they didn't like that. So they made me leave. They made me leave the, the facility. They sent me to another, another facility. Um, I was able to go over there and keep my job, go over there as a worker. I just couldn't stay here. He gave me a choice. You can either go to the other facility. We'll give you, a, we'll let you keep your job. Um, as a worker, I went over there and my job changed instead of a unit worker. I became the laundry guy, which was just a total better move for me. I had my own cell. Like I said, it was just a better move, but he did make me pack up and leave. He gave me an option. Either pack up and leave or go to the hole. And I pack up and left. So when this kid checked in, they send him to the other facility where you where a lot of guys go to hide, right? They live by themselves. They don't have no cellies. But you hide out there so nobody, you know, if you got enemies, you put them down. Well, he didn't never put me as an enemy. He never put me on his enemy list. Like I said, he didn't tell on me. So when I got over there and I was a worker... And I seen him out. I seen him out at uh, Chow, and he didn't see me yet. I was a worker, and he walked by, and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking bust his balls. So I walked up to him, and at uh, on his wreck. I was a worker. I was out all the time, so I went up to him on his wreck, and I was like, "What's up? What's up, bro? All smoke?" Like I said, he was a big. He was a little kid. I was a lot bigger than him. I wasn't going to bully the kid. He didn't want nothing. He didn't want no beef. You know what I'm saying? He was trying to show out and act tough in front of his friends and and for his girl at the time, which was my my ex, my kid's mother. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want nothing to do with her. She, that, that was all him. You know what I'm saying? So 
But he was just trying to act tough and show her, oh, I, I care for you, whatever. And, you know, you're doing this shit. So he was trying to act like a tough guy. And that night he ran. You know what I'm saying? He had four friends with him and he ran. You know, when when I seen him in jail, I had nowhere to go. What's up? What's up? Listen, please. He begged me, please. He, I had him buy me canteen for a month um, to let him live there on a the block to not make a move. I'll buy, I'll pay, you know, I'll, I'll pay you. I'll, I'll buy you canteen for a month. Just don't make me leave again. Blah, blah, blah. He liked it over where he was, and I, I agreed. And from that day, because I was lenient with him and they didn't check him in again, we kind of got like, um, one of his, his uncle actually was a good friend of mine, you know what I'm saying? So we got to talking and then the kid just like, we became acquaintances, you know what I'm saying? It's the way it was. I'm not going to keep bullying the kid. I'm not a bully, you know, and he didn't want no smoke with me and blah, blah, blah. You know, and just his respect levels went, just went so much to a higher level when I seen him, you know what I'm saying? Face to face. And now when I see him, he's like, hey, what's up? You know, like he's my friend. Hey, how you doing, Mikey? And I just seen him today and it just made me think, I'm like, this kid, man, all that smoky talk, he was a hero. And then when he come into then when he come into prison, and I was sitting there, his eyeballs hit the roof. Like, holy shit! That's the thing that a lot of, a lot of these guys need to to realize. You talk a lot of craziness out in the street, and you threaten people, and you go back and forth on the internet and the phones, and you're in the streets, right? And you got that life. When you go to jail, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to run. When you walk in and you see somebody that you got smoke with, there's no way to run. So if you're one of them people who got smoke with everybody, you're cocky with everybody, you're fighting with everybody. Once you get to prison, you might have five or six guys that are standing there that are going to bust your face. It's just a little thing for you to think about, you know, when you're out here being a tough guy and a hero. Once you get behind them bars, remember you check your guns in, you check your weapons in. You can get it. You can get a. You know. You can get a, a a poker or something. But you check your weapons in. You check your guns in at the door, and it's just these. And if you're not one that can use these, you're in trouble. You know what I'm saying? I grew up using these. You know, so I was always comfortable. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it was just a story that I had to tell you, man. Checking people in was uh, a funny thing to do. I'll tell you another story. Part two coming to this one where I checked another. It's ironic, too. It was uh, the same ex. It was her son's father who was her man before me. That's a funny story. I checked him and I seen him. He came into prison. I checked him in. But I'll tell you that one in the next one. Part two coming up. It's your boy Big Will. Like and subscribe. Let me know what you think. You got any questions, comments, put them in the section below. And uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like, uh,